All right, the next type of equation we want to look at are rational equations. So before we get too far into that, let me just kind of remind you what it means when I even say the word rational. So our number system is comprised of all sorts of classifications. Uh, we start out by talking about natural numbers. Those are the ones that we can count on our fingers. And then we added in the number zero. That gave me whole numbers. We then moved into the idea that I needed to represent positive and negative whole numbers, and that gave me integers. Uh, after integers, we have what's called rationals, which is what we're going to be dealing with now. But rationals are fractions and decimals. After rationals, we have what we call irrationals, where they are uh, non-terminating and non-repeating decimals, so to speak, and uh, they would be something kind of like pi or the letter E. And all of these things that we just talked about from the natural all the way over here to the irrational comprise real numbers. And um, a little bit later on we're going to talk about complex numbers, so we'll kind of come back to that in a little while, in a, in, in a later section. Now what do I mean when I talk about rational equations? This right here is an example of a rational equation. It's a little different from the previous example we looked at. Not only do I have fractions here, but in this case I happen to have variables that are now in the denominator. So this is an example of a rational equation. You want to be careful when you deal with rational equations because remember the cardinal rule says I'm not allowed to have a zero in the denominator. If I have a variable in the denominator, then I need to be aware that whatever that value for the variable is, it can't cause my denominator to be equal to zero. So in this particular case, I know that the number zero is not allowed to be uh, as, an, as a possible solution for x, because if I were to replace x with 0, it would cause this denominator to be 0. So some things to think about as you're working on your rational equations. So I have um, two examples that we're going to look at here. We're going to solve this first uh, equation for uh, the variable x, and we're going to also write the value or the values of that variable that could make the denominator 0. So we want to think about that ahead of time. Well, if this is the equation we're looking at, I have the variable x here and I have the variable 2x over here. So if you're thinking 0 is the number that is not going to be allowed as a um, as a possible value for x. So what number, um, what value of the variable would make my denominator equal to zero? Well, that's when x is equal to zero. It would cause the denominator to be equal to zero. So we want to, we want to answer that part of the question. Now, how do I go about solving this rational equation? Well, it's really not any different from the previous example where I have fractions, right? Just because I have a variable in the denominator, that still doesn't, that doesn't mean I don't have a fraction. And I want to get rid of my fractions. I want to get rid of these denominators here, period. So what would the least common denominator be between x, 2x, and 4? The least common denominator between x, 2x, and 4 happens to be 4x, because x divides into 4x, 2x divides into 4x, and 4 divides into 4x. So this is the least common denominator. It's basically um, a combination of the denominator that you see, already see here. So what do I do? Well, I have 1, 2, 3, four terms in this equation, and I want to be sure that I multiply all four terms by 4x over 1. So we're going to start here on the leftmost uh, value, and I say 4x over 1 times 2 over x, plus, don't forget this 3, that's 4x times 3. Most students forget that part, and then they'll get the question wrong. That's equal to the third term. Uh, let's start with 4x here to be consistent. 4x over 1 times 5 over 2x 
plus 4x over 1 times 13 over 4. So I have my uh, multiplication problem right here. And I, again, encourage you to write it out in all of these steps. Don't cheat your steps because uh, you might make a mistake. So what happens when I multiply these two numbers together? This x cancels that x up there. And that leaves me with 4 times 2, which is just 8. Plus. 4x times 3 is 12x equals, what happens here? Well, that x cancels that x. This 2 divides into that 4 2 times, and that's going to give me 2 times 5, which would be 10, plus this 4 divides into that 4, leaving me with just x times 13, or 13x. So we went from, again, this nasty uh, fractional, rational equation up here to something that's a little bit more workable down here with all whole numbers. So I'm going to gather my variables up this time on the right-hand side by subtracting 12x to the right. That's going to be 12x minus, uh, from 13x would just be x. Now I'm going to take this 10 and I'm going to subtract it to the left. Okay, So I'm going to subtract 10x here and 8 minus, t not 10x, I'm going to subtract 10 from this side and subtract it from here, and that gives me a negative 2. So the answer to this rational equation right here is just x is equal to negative 2. And this is kind of an example of when I move, I didn't, I didn't um, when I got to this point right here, I didn't gather all my variables up on the left. You can see here that I gathered my variables up on the right because it gave me a positive, uh, a positive value for my variable, which is what I tend to do.